Hello everyone, thank you for watching another episode. Today we'll be replacing this guy right here. This is a ball joint, in this case for a 2010 Subaru with approximately 128,000 miles. Now if you're not sure this is your problem, we just shot a video very, very shortly. I will include that link in the description box showing on how I diagnose this is the problem that we're having. Now that being said, the technique I'll be showing because this could be a real pain to remove. So if you have done this job before and you did it a different way, please leave a comment. I love to read how you guys are replacing these. Also, it will help other people uh, if they don't have the tools or if they're uh, maybe uh, not too sure they want to use the technique that I'll be showing. So please leave those comments. I'd love to hear back from you guys. So that being said, the vehicle's already jacked up. Let's go ahead and remove the, the front tire and let's get this guy done and over with. Now once I have the tire off, what I want to do right here is your stabilizer bar. So this is your tie rod. The ball joint is right here. And then you have your stabilizer bar. That's this guy right here. Now if you follow it, it has there's a bracket right here. So I want to remove, there's a 12 millimeter nut in this case right there. So again, 12 millimeter. Now sometimes if you can't remove these because it's too tight, just grab yourself another socket and an extension. I hope you guys can see this. And then place it over the end of the ratchet. And I apologize, the lighting here isn't good, but it's dark outside, and I got a bunch of lights underneath the car, but maybe a little hard to see this. But this will give you extra leverage to remove these two bolts. Whoop. And one thing I should have done right off the bat, use some PB Blaster or WD-40. will make your job a little bit easier. So I have both bolts removed and then I have a bracket here with one, two, three, 14 millimeter bolts. I'm going to remove this bracket. This will give us more free play so we can drop the suspension arm, which you will see exactly why we're doing this in a moment. So now right down here, there's a cotter pin, and we need to remove the cotter pin, and then there's a castle nut. So I just want to free up any uh, loose dirt or rust. So again, here's your castle nut, and we just need to remove the cotter pin. So I just have a flathead screwdriver here. I just want to pry out the ends here. Let me grab my uh, pliers. Hold on. Okay, here we go. And of course, we will install a new cotter pin. In fact, it comes from Subaru. Now, there are a lot of different companies that make these ball joints. In this case, I'm just going with a factory Subaru part. This one lasted for eight years, 128,000 miles. I think it's $5 more than an aftermarket part, so might as, as well go with, uh, with OEM. And then on the opposite end, I'm just going to rotate this well it looks like a broke that's all right make sure you guys can see this okay and there you go okay now we're going to remove this castle nut now to remove that castle nut this is an 18 millimeter socket and I have a breaker bar this makes the job incredibly easy again you want a long long handle to give you more leverage to remove these very very tight bolts okay here we go one more time and then we'll use a ratchet here and of course the ball joint also comes with a brand new castle nut okay now we have one more bolt to remove and that's right here. This is known as the pinch bolt. Now on these Subarus, they're very, very well known to actually snap off. If they snap off, then you have to drill out what's left over inside the housing. Now if that worries you, what you can use is a butane torch, for example. 
what you have. Let me just show you. In other words, something like this. You know, if you're a chef, for example, and creme brulee is your thing, you would have one of these in the kitchen. With that being said, you can create a heat shield because you don't want to torch up uh, your boot here for your drive line or your CV axle. Also make sure everything is so clean because obviously now you're dealing with a fire hazard. But you can give that uh, technique a shot if you wish. I'm just going to try to remove this. Uh, I'll spray some PB Blaster, let it soak for a little bit, and we'll cross our fingers. Hopefully uh, it doesn't snap off. If it does snap off, there are quite a number of YouTube videos showing on how you can just extract what's left over. Essentially just drilling out what's left over and installing a new bolt. But uh, let's give it a shot. So again, I'm using a breaker bar, and this is a 14 millimeter. I really hope this doesn't break. I sprayed down PB Blaster. Actually, let me get a little bit more PB Blaster on top, and we'll rock and roll here. There's a little slit, so I'm hoping the PB Blaster sort of penetrates in between the slit. Okay, here goes nothing. Just going to take it nice and easy. Okay, looks like we're good. Let me see if I can maybe a little bit more. Okay. Let me grab a ratchet. Now I'm going to use a very, very long screwdriver, which really the better thing, if you have one, is a long pry bar. Now, unfortunately, this is just the longest uh, solid object I have that will fit in between this joint. So it's 23 inches in length. The longer, the better. Again, if you can get a pry bar, uh, that will also certainly work. So as it sits right now, this control arm is incredibly, incredibly tight. In other words, it's really mounted on the ball joint. So I'm going to use that screwdriver, place it right here in between the lower control arm and where the pinch bolt was, and I'm going to just snap it down and break it from this mount. Now the other thing you could try, and you could rent this from your local auto parts store, is just a pitchfork. Now these you can also purchase online. Uh, if you plan on doing your own auto repair, or again, you could just rent it uh, for nothing. As you can see, uh, mine's a little beat up, but nonetheless, it gets the job done. Now, you do need a lot of strength to do this. You may want to try to exert as much of your body weight on the crowbar, or in this case, on the screwdriver, and just put as much weight as you can. I can't stress that enough. These are incredibly tight. All right, here we go. I'm going to stand up. Place it in between the joint here. Press down as hard as I can, okay? Here we go. There we go. Now, as you can see, I removed, I was getting a lot of grease. It was making a mess everywhere, so I just cut the rubber off very quickly. I'm not sure if you can pick that up. But once I have the pinch bolt removed, I'm going to take a piece of wood and I want to drive down on this lower control arm so it pushes out. It's a very, very stubborn joint. You really have to push out the ball joint. So I'm going to grab a piece of wood and just hit it with a hammer and uh, hopefully it drives out the joint. Okay, here we go. Another hit. Okay. Now if you're curious on the type of wood we just used there, 
This is a one by four piece of pine. The length is almost three feet. Pine is very, very soft. So ultimately, you can really use any wood you have lying around the house. Three pound hammer, good solid wax, and you'll be in good shape. There we go. So there's the old ball joint, and we'll go ahead and install the brand new one. So here's the new ball joint. I just want to get it in there. Now what you want to make sure, as you can see, it's completely seated in the joint. So now I'm going to install the pinch bolt and this is torqued to 40 foot-pounds if you want to use a torque wrench otherwise just make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, here we go. So I do have a torque wrench, I'm just torquing it to 40 foot-pounds. Now we'll install the castle nut and wrap it up with the cotter pin. Now these are typically around 30 foot-pounds, nothing incredibly tight. Right there. And then I'm going to rotate it another 60 degrees and we'll insert the cotter pin. Now when you're ready to reinstall the brackets for the sway bars, as you can see, maybe a little difficult, but right there, there's an arrow pointing toward the front. So just make sure you install these brackets the correct orientation. And this is just some brake clean to clean off the rotor. As you can see, I have my marks on here. So that's what it takes to remove one of these, in this case from a Subaru. I hope this gives you a pretty decent idea. Time-wise, I would say maybe three hours if it's your first time, uh, and do it on like a Saturday. And if you're doing it Sunday night and you're in a rush, forget it. So give yourself enough time, and again, leave those comments. I love to hear how you guys do this. Thank you for watching.